I do think there's been an awful lot of progress made in addressing the too big to fail problem. The resiliency of our largest, most systemically important institutions is substantially greater than a decade ago. Capital levels are way up. Because of that runability that I mentioned a moment ago, we now have both liquidity regulations in place and much better liquidity management systems by the largest institutions. We have made progress on a resolution regime that will make sure that no individual firm is too big to fail. It can be resolved in insolvency. I don't think we're there yet, and so that's one area where pr more progress is needed. One thing I will say, David, I think when someone comes and tells you we've solved the too big to fail problem, that's when you should begin to get worried. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost insoluble by definition. I think it, because the financial system adapts so readily and so um, expertly in a lot of ways to create new opportunities for making money, the financial regulatory system needs to be attentive to those changes and to evolve with it. And by the way, that's what didn't happen in the pre-crisis period. I so I, I do wonder, though, Governor um, <clears throat> Tarullo, if we're getting into a cycle where people are forgetting the financial crisis and, and exactly what you just mentioned. Yeah, so that's a that's an excellent point. And you know, I, if if we just go back to a decade or 12 years ago, what was what was the state of the financial system, including some of our biggest firms then? One, we, even though capital markets and traditional lending had been integrated, when firms priced for risk a lot of the instruments in which they traded, they didn't take into account the credit risk that was embedded in those instruments. Mortgage-backed securities are the best example. Two, they were not attuned to the possibility that across the system you could have a liquidity squeeze as everybody pulled back saying we're not sure about asset prices so for the moment we're just going to stay on the sidelines. Three, in many instances they did not even know what their own risk was. In 2009, when we ran that first set of stress tests on the fly, as it were, we sent out requests for information, and more firms than one would have expected were not able in anything like a reasonable period of time to aggregate risks to the same counterparties from across their big firm. Those are the things that produce the regulatory changes that we've put in place, and those are the things which shouldn't be forgotten as a historical matter, but as I said a moment ago, the kind of adaptations in the financial system may mean that new risks are created along the way. How central to the regulatory structure at this point are those stress tests? I, I think that they are the single most important supervisory innovation, not just since the crisis, but really for the last 20, 25 years. What do the stress tests do? Stress tests first try to look at a sizable portion of the U.S. financial system at the same time to see how a recession or a particular move in asset prices would affect all of the larger and just a little bit less than largest firms. Second, they're dynamic. We change the scenarios uh, from year to year precisely so that we test for different things because you don't know where the real stresses in the system are going to come from. Uh, and third, it is a way of allowing us not only to make sure that firms have enough capital and that they don't, as in 2007, continue putting out dividends when their capital is shrinking, but also it's an opportunity to make sure that their own risk management systems, quantitative and qualitative, are attuned to the idiosyncratic risks that their own firms may face. And there's just one other thing to add. Yes, the largest, most systemically important firms need the stress test, but there's a reason why we go further down, and that is you need the whole system able to intermediate credit even in a severe recession. So with very large regional banks, which individually are probably not too big to fail, we still want to make sure that as a group, those banks are resilient enough to continue providing credit to U.S. households and businesses.